What is up, trader fanatics from around the world? It's your Mark Wahlberg of Moving Average. Hope you're doing sensational, serendipitous, and splendid. The holidays are here, and I want to make you a video. Number one, saying I love you. Number two, you're incredible. And number three, let's talk about where the bottom is going to be on Tesla. Let's talk about what the heck to do on Amazon. Let's review Google. Let's talk about Apple. We're going to talk about the big boys. And then we're going to also talk about how amazing the real life trading community is because so many traders just absolutely slayed the day. Fun fact, on days like this where everything works, today is Thursday, by the way, you're watching this on our YouTube, make sure to hit that subscribe button and click the thumbs up. Apparently it makes my ego feel better when you do that. On Thursdays, when you are very profitable, what should you do on Friday? Generally, nothing. In my experience, it almost Always, I give some money back on Friday when Thursday is just, mwah. that's je ne sais quoi. It's so beautiful. It has a gorgeous move. Today is that day. And we'll go through Slack. We'll give some examples in this video. But wow, wow, we make wow town. On Fridays, tomorrow, I guarantee you, I'm not going to take one single trade because today was just remarkable. First and foremost, the cues following Mr. Squiggles pretty well. Most of you have seen this chart and this trade and this analysis, and I don't want to brag, but I'm going to brag for like eight seconds. Holy Moses, Mr. Squiggles literally travels in time. Incredible, incredible setup. Really great analysis and awesome to know what was going to happen um, before it happened. So that's the cues. Overall trend is going to continue higher. So as promised, let's go look at Tesla because Tesla is just getting absolutely steamrolled. Now, it's not a big surprise to me or pretty much anyone who's actively trading the markets because Tesla broke below the 200 simple moving average two weeks ago. And when it did that, I've said a million and a half times, there's nothing bullish about that at all. And if it closes below the 200, which it did, there's also nothing stopping it. Nothing on any time frame at all until you get down here to the 100 simple moving average on a monthly, which is at 8740. So yes, you are going to want to call a bottom on Tesla. It's going to be a very natural feeling. And I had seven or eight traders literally reach out to me over here saying, Newsom, how heavy should I go in on Tesla? And my answer was not heavy at all. Like if you want to buy 10 or 20 shares for your long-term account, great. I did. I spent four or $5,000 buying some shares there. You're never going to call the bottom in a long-term account. It was a very, very small position. No big deal. If you're doing that, fantastic. If you're buying two or three shares, a share at a time, fantastic. But this was certainly not the time to go heavy because it literally closed below the 200 simple moving average. And then we trade sideways for two or three days with some bull candles and we just kept getting absolutely crushed. What made Tesla such a good move today relative to yesterday is the fact that we opened below the low of yesterday. That's it. Yesterday wasn't a great day because we gapped up and we took out the low, granted. But anytime Tesla opens below the low of yesterday, there and there is a much, much, much better move than this and this. Those two days were kind of garbagey, although you could have made a little bit of money on them. These days were much better. So how should you play Tesla? And again, going back to my opinion of what I just mentioned a moment ago, very, very small size because anything is possible at Tesla at this stage. The only other support that I can visually see is this 100 simple on a monthly and it looks like it really, really wants to get there. Now, granted, it's going to have some retracements and some, ret uh, some pullbacks at some point, probably sooner than later. So we're talking something like this and this, but whatever retracement, whatever size we, we get, lower is likely going to happen. Now, granted, I do know a few traders like Craig who are selling some puts on Tesla because they actually truly want to own some shares at some ridiculous levels. I don't think that's anything to be worried about. I think that's an okay thing to consider. But again, you are below all major moving averages and you're selling puts in a downtrend. If you do that, sell very, very small amounts. Do not be aggressive here. I do not think it's the time to get aggressive, especially in a recession, especially with higher inflation, especially when people are struggling to pay their bills and debts increasing across the way. There's not a lot of people who are spending $70,000, $75,000 on a car right now, especially with Elon doing stuff in Twitter and the Cybertruck not coming out, all that kind of good stuff. So talking about Tesla, really quick, I got to go just share some love to our 90-day trading program 
where we had traders just absolutely get paid. My girl, Carrie, 1.2 hours on Tesla. My girl, Emily, trading Tesla. Look at this setup on Tesla she did. Short below the high wave bull candle, stop above, easy 1.2. I mean, cleanest trade I've ever seen. Carlos Gomez, also making money on Tesla. Gina, also making money on Tesla. Marta making money. Sean making money. Sony making money. Kartik making money. Let's go, baby. This is amazing. So the 90-day trading program was one of the master classes that's available. This one is coming up again for anyone who wants to potentially take it in January. But long story short, it's nothing special. It's an accountability group where I'm showing up every day telling people this is what you need to be doing. This is what you need to be focused on. If you're not focusing on it, you obviously don't like money. Let's go look at Amazon. And Amazon... It looks to me like this is a trade that uh, Bob played. So my boy Bob getting 1.8 Rs on his um, Amazon trade. Four winning trades this week. No losers. Five Rs for my dude Bob. And look at the Tinny May candle. Bull candle. Shorting below support. Stop above the prior high. Moving his stop loss like a robot. Getting those gains. By the way, team, Amazon's going to hit 87 in case you're, sorry, 77. Amazon's going a lot lower than it is right now. And here's why. Strong bull volume. Strong bull volume. Immediately wrecked. Immediately wrecked. Retesting strong bull volume. Immediately wrecked. Hello, 100 simple on a monthly chart. We are breaking that. That is not a great sign. Now, if we close below here on Amazon, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to go below the COVID low, which is 80. And then we are probably going to go below here, which is 60. And I don't really know how lower Amazon's going to go. But this is a hammer. And we only have a week left with the strongest season for Amazon, I would argue, of the year, which is Christmas and everyone ordering things. So if we close below here, this is now a resistance. This is now a supply. This is a level to be watching to short retest as we trade into here. Now, this bullish stop limit, so that we're clear, on my screen was a 10 EMA trade that did not trigger. And that was on a bear candle closing above the 10 right here on the 14th of December. I don't personally have any shares short of Amazon. I will be just day trading it short or very, very quick term swing trading short, something like this. Uh, but should you be buying some Amazon shares long term? Yes. But slowly, tiny, one to two shares, 10 shares, 10 shares a week. Do not be aggressive here. It looks pretty rough, and uh, man, I'm very, very interested to see what's going to happen. Google, same thing. You got to love Google, but once you took out this very powerful bull candle, extremely obvious bull sign on the 22nd of November, when we close below that, protective puts all day, all day, all day. Long-term averages, were below them on the daily. We have closed below, shattered, wrecked, and destroyed the 200 on the weekly. We retested it, so here's the break. Here's the retest. Here's the failure. Look at the volume dry up. That is a clear sign of a retracement. We're now below the 200 simple. I mean, now you're going to have to go to the monthly charts on Google and be looking at the monthly to see what happens. If we can start taking out this hammer on Google, we're probably going lower. I don't want to sound like a perma bear. I'm by no means a perma bear. I don't really care the direction though. I'm actually a perma bull. I want markets to go up, but they're not going up right now. Everything is getting absolutely Patrick Swayze roadhouse. So be very, very careful buying shares. Be very slow. Be very methodical. Be very light and be day trading like an absolute monster right now. Apple. So here's my chart. My theory on Apple It's going to kind of chop around for a bit at a very, very strong support. Extremely, extremely strong. The longer this chops around, the better for the bears. But you do not, and I do mean you do not want Apple to take out 130 especially with a close, especially if we start trading sideways and absolutely on this monthly chart. If we close like this on the monthly, all of this is now a old support, new resistance. This is a great hammer and we're taking out that hammer immediately, which means my overall bias on Apple right now is a light short, probably down into 115 sometime in January or early February. That's extremely likely after we kind of chop around, get beat up a little bit, and kind of start making some waves. When will I start trading a little bit more on the bullish side? Well, team, we're going to have to start closing above some previous resistances. Case in point, on the SPY, 
Uh, we can trade back down to the 200. And while we're here on SPY around 365, I'll be a little bit more on the bullish perspective again, looking for some trade setups, trying to go find something that looks different than the broader markets. It's probably not tech. It's probably consumers. It's probably dividends. It's probably boring John Deere or Caterpillar or Boeing. It's going to be something a little bit weird and, and different, most likely, that doesn't look like the broader markets if I'm going to be going bullish. And if I am going to go bullish, it'll be with day trades, extremely, extremely long-term shares, but very, very small size, maybe some bull put spreads every now and then if I can find a good location. But team, things aren't looking extremely exceptional by any stretch of the imagination, in my opinion. And if they continue to raise interest rates, we're likely going to continue lower from all aspects that I can see. The one thing that would stop this is the one thing that stopped it in 2018, which I was backtracking that during the backtracking marathon. And I'm sure that you were there during that. I learned that this is the last time Jay Powell said, you know what, forget it. We're not going to continue to increase interest rates. We're going to keep printing and keep having a blast. The 26th, we absolutely crushed higher and just murder housed it from there. We had a really, really big sell off. And then we got that Santa rally here. So can that happen again? It's possible. It's extremely likely. But the only way it would come out, the only way it would happen is Jay Powell would have to say specifically, you know what? I was just kidding. We're going to stop the inflation. We're going to stop increasing interest rates. And uh, let's just kind of calm down. Let's fear a recession more than we fear inflation. That would have to happen. And it's going to have to happen soon. Is it likely? It can always occur. Is it going to happen? The chances are less likely in my opinion. So that's my overall viewpoint, overall perspective, and some quick shout outs for some traders who are just slanging and banging, snapping X and cashing checks. My boy Nicholas with 1.1 R's um, overall. Let's see. Uh, Mike Teague snashing some nice moves. Oh boy. I mean, this is just, there's so many good trades today. Um, Emily getting after it. Uh, Steve getting after it. Look at my boy, Alan Stanley. Alan Stanley playing the gorgeous move on Tesla, shorting below here. Mm, that is, look at that high wave bull candle. It's almost like it was very indecisive. Wow, that's a great trade, Alan. Extremely well done. Team, I'm feeling good. I hope you're feeling good. No trades for me today. Sorry, no trades for me tomorrow because today was free money. If, of course, you follow any of the principles at Real Life Trading, which I teach the entire world for free. Love you so much. Thanks for watching. You rock.